What's up guys, Joe here. Welcome back to my channel. And today we're back with the Giro d'Italia. I cannot remember being so pumped ahead of a Grand Tour. I really cannot wait for the race to pink. So a quick overview of the parkour's first 21 stages. We have a time trial to start and end a long time trial as well in Milan to finish in between a plethora of mountains, including the Seca Diala, stage 17. We have the Monte Zoncalan. Of course, Chris Froome won there a few years ago. He won't be doing that this year, uh, but we have the Cortina Zampezzo stage, really fun stage. Obviously, the Montalcino stage as well, with the graveled roads of Strada Bianca. That is going to be an unreal stage, and we're playing through all of them on PCM. But first, if you do go on to enjoy today's video, make sure you hit like and drop a sub if you're new to the channel. So we get a very nice overview of the start list. I have sorted them by ability, and it seems the Koenig Quickstep come in as the best team according to PCM. Of course, Remco is back. Joao Almeida is here as well. What a team they have with Masnada. Uh, we have the Ineos Grenadiers. Ghana, Bernal, Moscon is here. He's been in great form too. Sivakov and Martinez, but Bernal is their man. Landissimo is here. Freelander, we want to give him the chance of winning a Grand Tour. Hopefully he can do it this year. I'm backing Lander in real life. Bilbao, though, has been on unreal form as well. Uh, we have Caleb Ewan here, Vincenzo Nibali. Coming off that injury, a shame for him, but Balka Molma and Chicone join him at Trek. We have Nozolo here alongside Pozzo for Quebec. Nozolo leading a pretty good team, actually, for Quebec Assos. Further down, Sagan Bookman. We have Merlier in his first Grand Tour. Grunewagen returns for Jumbo Visma. Vlasov leading Astana Premier Tech. Excited to see what he could do, to be fair. Roman Barze here with Jai Hindley for Team DSM. That should be very fun. We have Formolo for UAE. He's leading their team. We have EF Nippo with that beautiful New Jersey. Really big fan of that. Betio and Carthy lead them. Dan Martin is here. We don't have the new Israel jersey just yet in PCM. I'm sure we'll have that in the coming days. But Simon Yates, I think the favourite for the Giro, in my opinion. He's the favourite coming in in the best form. Simon Yates, it's his Giro to lose, I would maybe suggest. But we have Mark Soler for Movistar, Viviani. And then you can see some of the outsider teams as well. Should be a great race. So I have thought long and hard about the team. It's come down to two, which I just cannot decide on. But we have Androni here, led by Cepeda, the 22-year-old. But of course... Not the best team, their Aconte Pro team will be going in the breakaways trying to get a stage win at this race. That will be our goal. Or we go with EF Nippo and Hugh Carthy trying to win his first Grand Tour. Try and get some stage wins as well. We obviously have the legend TJ and we have the new jersey. So I have decided we will go for EF Nippo at this Giro. I mean, I, I really wanted to try Androni, but we'll go with EF and try and win the GC with Carthy, which is not going to be easy, that's for sure. So Rivi of Yolo Kometa gets the time trial underway here at the Giro. But first, I do want to say a massive shout out to Emre, Nibli, Sabaronto, Barna and Stylus, the guys who have put this Giro d'Italia parkours and stages together for us. Massive props and thank you to you guys. All the hours you put in, but it's really appreciated. And I will say their links will be down below, so check them out. And it will be TJ Van Garderen getting the EF Giro d'Italia underway. What a beautiful jersey, but not a beautiful race day for TJ. However, TJ does have the best time currently at the first split. Let's push it to the line here. We should take the provisional lead, I do believe, with TJ Van Garderen. Let's see. Massive time gap, 34 seconds to Viela. And right now we do have the first of the true GC contenders. I would say Pavel Sivkov, where is he going to go compared to TJ? 12 seconds behind, TJ still in the lead. This could be the end of TJ's lead though. Let's see Max Volscheid next across the line. He was first at the first split, but he's five seconds down behind TJ. I think TJ's second split was really quick. Fausto Masnada, what can he do at this Giro? Is he going to be afforded a free roll, but he's 17 seconds down here. Not too bad. Next up for us, Jens Kukalair. Where does he go to the line? Top five. We have a few guys right at the top right now, but Luis Leon Sanchez looks like a fairly disappointing time for him. Let's see where he goes. He would have hoped to challenge today, but 16 seconds behind TJ. Next up, we have the British champ, Alex Dowsett, who again, doesn't seem to be challenging TJ quite. That is a great sign by TJ, apparently. So Foss of Norway and Jumbo Visma across the line again. I thought he would challenge, but he is 14 seconds behind TJ at Van Garderen. But Maro Schmidt, T-Mobile Bianchi legend right here, is looking on course to beat TJ at Van Garderen. Is he? Let's see Schmidt across the line. Can he beat 
TJ, no he can't, three seconds down, but a great sign by Schmid for sure. I wonder what Balkan Molomer will do at this Giro. I think in real life he's hunting stages, but here he's just 16 seconds down. So next we have Jai Hindley, who of course is going to lose time in this time trial. It's about how much time for the Aussie and it's only going to be 25 seconds. I think he'll take that for sure. Okay, so if you told me that a rider would beat TJ, I wouldn't predict it would be Domenico Pozzovivo. Let's see though, he's first at the first time split and he is two seconds behind TJ, who still holds the lead somehow in this TT. Oh, but apparently we have Emmanuel Bookman on absolutely fantastic form here for Bora Hansgrohe at the Giro. He's three seconds down on TJ, but great start. Gianni Moscon too is up next. I think Gianni is going to have a great Giro at Italia, and he gets a top 10 here. So this is on paper our most important time trial of the day. And apparently, Hugh Carthy isn't feeling it. You can see a minus three day. What are you doing, Hugh? So Hugh Carthy is entering the first split right here. I'm pushing it on this flatter section. We're still 16 seconds down. We're going to lose time here. It's about how much though. So here we go. We're not going to get close to TJ, sadly, with Hugh Carthy here. It's such a horrible uh, time to get a minus three day. Let's go 99 to the line and we lose 31 seconds. It's not the end of the world, but behind Jai Hindley, I think, with that time. So at this point, TJ Van Garderen has been on the hot seat for around 80 riders or so, I would guess. But Chris Hamilton, can he beat TJ Van Garderen? He does. On the same second, finally, TJ is beaten. If Danny Martinez is in form at this race for Ineos, I think he could be a really helpful tool for them. And he is third, just one second behind Hamilton. So here is one of the main reasons I chose the FNIPO, actually, for this Giro. Simon Carr is a rider who has been really great so far this season. And we're going to try and deliver him a stage win at this Giro d'Italia. Here comes Carr towards the finish then in Turin. It's not gonna be a great time, but not terrible either. And he goes 13 seconds down. To be fair, that's much better than I expected. So George Bennett will be leading Jumbo Visma for the Giro. I'm interested to see what he can do in fairness. And in the TT, it's not bad, 22 seconds down. So Ciccone has been talked up as leading Trek at the Giro this year, but the time trial is his big downfall. He loses 36 seconds here today and that's probably on a good day for him here we go then jonathan castroviejo is on a great sign but he can't take the lead from chris hamilton it's so close right now at the top of course we're still waiting for the big hitters Peo bilbao is up next it's not a great time though for Peo, who i'm expecting big things of at the Giro this year. But this is the man everyone cannot wait to see remco evnepool finally back on a bike in a race suit as well and he takes the best time here. No surprise, six seconds clear for Remco. One of my fantasy Velo Games picks here, Quinton Hermans, who I think will win a stage at this Giro. Not the best TT in the world, but I'm expecting a stage win from him at some point. So we've got Ganna's younger, in superior cousin right now, Eduardo Affini of Yombo Visma. What can he do? And a good sign here. He is second place provisionally, but this man is searching still for his first Grand Tour stage win. He's right there right now, Vic Campanets, right there with Remco. Can he beat the Belgian Campanets? He's one second down. Is it gonna be another near miss for poor Victor Campanets? So many people's favorite for the Giro d'Italia this year, Egan Bernal. I'm not convinced on him just yet. He seems to be struggling as well in this time trial. 36 seconds down, almost as bad as Hugh Carthy right there. But now Joao Almeida, is it going to be a Zekernik? One, two, right now, I'm not sure. Almeida though, a great time trial, as you would expect, five seconds down on Remco. So we now have the final riders really on course. Our final rider is Alberto Betiol. Sadly, not a great day. If he was on a really good day, I feel like Betiol could maybe challenge for a podium on this stage. He's not quite on the form though required for that. Let's see where he finishes. So we can really try and push it to the line here with Bessiel. We've probably gone a little early. Shouldn't matter too much. And it is third place. Okay. What a final split that was by Bessiel there. Not a bad time. Our best finisher by far. Or only a few, uh, only two seconds ahead of TJ to be fair. But Vlasov, 30 seconds down. Interested to see what Vlasov can do. I'm not overly convinced of him to be fair. For this Giro, we'll see though. Formulo is leading UAE, not sure in the GC though. And Dan Martin is having an absolute shocker. He's 20 seconds behind Bardet at the first split here. Dan Martin of Israel is a minute down over an 8k DT. Bardet 
is uh, proving him wrong by going 31 seconds down. So we now have my favourite for the Giro this year. If you don't count Landis, and maybe we have Simon Yates here. Where does he go? Not a bad time. 21 seconds down. Solid start for him. Nibbly, though, looking pretty good here, despite his injury, of course, in real life. 19 seconds down. Not too bad. Oh, and here we could have the first shock of the Giro d'Italia. Ghana, one second down at the first split. Can the world champion overhaul the deficit here? No, he can't. Ghana goes third place. Ghana doesn't win the opening stage. He won't go into pink here in the first stage of the Giro. But we have Mikel Lander. How much time is he going to lose? Right now, 43 seconds. Caleb Ewan. Then we have Remy Cavagna, who is really struggling at the first split. Here's my pick, actually, to win this stage in real life. He's not going to do it here. Remco Evenepoel is going to go into the Maglia Rosa. Poor time by Cavagna. What a stage. Well, 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 what a start to the Giro. Remco into pink, coming back from his injury. How has he done it? What a rider. Vitz Campanats again. Another second place at Grand Tour. I think that's his fifth runner-up position on the stage as a Grand Tour. Ghana misses out. Bessio with a great time for us, to be fair, in the top five. TJ was up there too. Hugh Carthy, where does he end? It's not a great time, is it? We're down in 88th place behind the likes of Egan Bernal. Yeah, it's not a great time behind Barze even. But, you know, it's all still to play for in the GC. But anyway, guys, tomorrow we have stage two. Should be a sprint stage. And I'm not sure what we're going to do because we don't have an out and out sprinter. But we'll give it our best. If you enjoyed today, though, make sure you smash that like button. Drop a sub on the channel as well if you're new. And I'll see you guys in the next one.